Howdy folks, Shell Presto here with another Sketch and Chat, where I lump a bunch of my drawing sessions together into one video and we discuss a topic. Today, it's about doing your first comic, or getting back into doing comics after a dry spell, or a previous failed attempt. Well, perceived failure. I personally believe that no attempt to do a comic is a complete failure. Just getting one page done makes you more accomplished than everyone who says they want to do one and hasn't. Of course, the really hard part is to finish a comic. So we're going to talk about keeping your first comic short. I know, I know. You've got your magnum opus to tell. You've got an epic story on the scale of Lord of the Rings or the Infinity Gauntlet War and Crusade. You have 12 super interesting characters you have to introduce. You have a world bible full of interesting locations and alternate history, and you want to show that all to the world with your words and pictures combined. And I mean that I know. Genuinely. But here's the hard truth. Comics are a lot of work. There's a reason that when my husband and I get on a roll, we can pump out an Ascension Epoch novel with an illustration per chapter in less than a year, if not months, but we don't have a full Ascension Epoch comic book out yet. Let it be known that I've done a dozen comics before, from strips and one-pagers up to twenty-pagers, but I have not done a full Ascension Epoch one yet. Now, you may just be that rare person who can, as a complete beginner, start your 400-page epic on day one and carry it through to page 400 effortlessly. And if you are, great! I envy you, actually. But probably what will happen is you'll spend eight or more hours on page one over a couple of days, Show some people who may like the art but can't possibly get excited about a comic from just seeing one page. You'll feel a little sad, take a couple more days on page two, more days than that on page three, and before you know it, two months have passed, page four is sitting there, and you're thinking, I have 396 more pages to go, and you'll get discouraged and quit. But if you do a short comic, I mean really short, two pages is a fine start, but maybe hard to pull off. Four or five or six should be your maximum, especially because you may find it flows better if you add a panel or a page here or there while you're doing it. Do not exceed eight. Seriously, don't do it. The goal here is to make your first checkpoint easy for yourself to give yourself a sense of accomplishment, something you could look at completed and say, yeah, I can do this. And if you do a really short comic, you will give yourself that sense of accomplishment and you can look at it completed and say, yeah, I can do this. But how can I tell anything meaningful in four pages? I can't even do setup in that amount of time, you may say. Well, you're right, you can't. You want to pick a single scene out of context. But no one will get it if I show it to them, you say. That's okay. This is for you, not anyone else. And you may be surprised to find that if you do show it to people, they may react positively or say, that's piqued my curiosity. I want to know more about this character. That's not guaranteed, but it could happen. Try to do something with only two characters max. Remember, simple to start. Maybe a single fight scene or a heated conversation. Maybe a confession of feelings. Don't do a whole origin. Don't start with the characters running into each other and starting a date with all the pleasantries, the hi, hello, here's some flowers. Just get into the interesting part. That's what you are interested in. That's what you want to draw. A lot of modern comic books are decompressed. 
That is, they draw their storylines out over six issues instead of telling a single story in a single 22-page issue. Manga doesn't suffer from this as much, but the American comic book industry is now tailored to the six-issue graphic novel uh, format. So that is probably not the best place to look at an example of what you can pull off in four pages, for example. Let's look a little further back in, at American comics. In Fantastic Four number one, the span between the takeoff of the shuttle, it going into the cosmic storm, and all four characters getting and displaying their powers is five pages long. One of the greatest origin stories in comics is compressed into five pages. In Uncanny X-Men 122, a sequence in which Storm enters the house she grew up in, gets attacked by a gang, overcomes most of the gang, and is saved by Power Man takes four pages. In Japanese manga, in Inuyasha Volume 9, I prefer Maison Ikoku as my Takahashi comic of choice, but I'm trying to go with something super popular so you might know what I'm talking about. Anyway, in Inuyasha Volume 9, the scene where the villain, the Peach Man's newest disciple, runs away from him, is killed, and is eaten by the Peach Man, takes three pages. That's a lot of character building in three pages. Dragon Ball Z is a little harder because the fights are so extended. But there's usually at least one big hit, or reaction to a big hit per page. We'll say a couple pages of kicks or blocks and finish it off with an energy attack in, you know, three or four pages for Dragon Ball Z type comics. I guess what I'm saying is, read some American comics that are a bit older closely or look at some Japanese comics, and you'll realize that you can fit a good little scene in a small amount of pages. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm working on at this point, this is my half-page comic strip Incorrigible Imps for Bexham's Bazaar magazine. It uses the characters from the normal Ascension Epoch universe's New Jersey-based Institute for Metaphysical and Phenomenological Studies, reimagined for a medieval fantasy setting. Labyrinth, a space-altering mage, is meeting the fire-starting half-fay ruby for the first time here. If you're wondering why there's more inks than pencils being shown, that's because my camera ain't the greatest and I had to cut a lot of footage I lost because the camera just couldn't focus well on the lighter pencils. It's because of the autofocus and I can't turn that feature off. If you want to help me get a new camera, please consider picking up one of our Ascension Epoch books off of Amazon.com or other online booksellers, or leaving me a tip in my PayPal tip jar. Back on topic. The other major advantage to doing a short comic to start is that it gives you the chance to learn from this small project and then apply what you've learned to a larger project. The very best way to learn comics is to make comics. You can study every book in the world, analyze comic books studiously, and plan your comic very carefully, sinking years upon years into preparing and waiting, quote, until you're ready, end quote. But make no mistake, you will screw up in your first comic. You might struggle to fit all the words into a panel. You might ask someone to look at it, and they'll be confused and read the panels in the wrong order because the layout was somewhat unclear. You might run out of room and not get the mystical pendant in the panel that the wizard has to refer to on the next page. But that's okay, because it's your first comic, and you kept it short, and you're learning. And you will only get better by doing. No amount of studying or planning beats the lesson of doing. Pick up that pencil, lay out those panels, and get drawing. Here's a hint. Start with the word bubbles, or draw a fight scene with almost no words. The word bubbles are what tripped me up worst when I started. Your two to six pager may not be your magnum opus, 
but it'll get you two to six pages closer to your magnum opus. Heck, if it turns out well, and it's a scene from the larger project you want to do, you can fold it into the bigger comic later, so long as it turns out well. Two to six pager first, then twenty, then, well, if you've got that 400 pager to tell, if you've got the first two short comics done, you have my blessing to go to the 400 pager. But two to six pages first. That's simple enough, right? You can do it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Remember, I illustrate and co-write books, and purchases help the channel. And, if you want to see this finished comic, you should check out Bexham's Bazaar, Issue 5. Have an awesome day, folks. Presto. Over and out. So, this was my first serious attempt at a comic. It was a fan comic for the Anime Slayers. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, it, it's grainy, I was doing computer coloring, and you can see I, I have the bitmap, bitmap jaggies going on with the color not going all the way to the edge, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I still have a, a, a very, uh, whimsical nostalgia feeling when I take a look at this sucker. Um, and I mean, it, it's fan art. It's completely fan art, and I, you can see I was using photographs that I took uh, in the woods for the background. Uh, it, it's got its problems, but it was a really great learning experience. I went kind of long. Uh, I did a 19-pager. Maybe I'll do a video talking more about my, talking about and critiquing my first attempt at a comic, but... Uh, the bigger thing is that while I was doing this comic, and this was back in 2001, so yeah, that's 18 years ago. I might be, well, I don't think I'm old, old, but I'm definitely older than I was back then. Anyway, uh, this doing this comic was a big step for me because I went from drawing like this and this uh, with... I don't know, uh, I certainly don't think there's, well, there's some things wrong with the faces, but, you know, th this doesn't look absolutely horrible or anything like that. Like, this is pretty good, uh, especially for, uh, I think it was 6, 17 at the time. Um, but I went from drawing like this within the span of this comic to drawing like this, and this was when I got really, really proud of my artwork. Um, I tried to pay more attention to detail. I tried to render out more of the textures and backgrounds by myself. Um, and I tried to do more dynamic poses and different layouts. And I think there's perhaps some readability issues with the layout here in the top four panels, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I. I went through a large change in my drawing when I did this, and I was very, very pleased with that at the time. Alright, so that previous comic uh, was a Slayer's fan comic, and I finished it. It turned out to be 19 pages. Um, this one here is from 2008, I believe, so it's now 11 years old. And... Uh, I, I certainly think I made some improvements, but th this was one of my unfinished comics. This got nixed because I had a friend who was trying to start up a literary magazine, and he was going to publish it monthly, and he was looking for content, and I said I could do two pages a month because I didn't want to eat up a ton of pages in his book or anything like that. And I was working full-time at the time, so... It just seemed like a fun thing to do. My uh, panel layouts got denser, which I uh, really liked. Um, I actually want to get back to doing panels like this because I like the layout, but I also think it's very readable. 
I should probably do something sort of critiquing my pages or my thoughts on them. But this one got scrapped, unfortunately. But the good news is, uh, then I met Mike and we repicked this character back up. Um, this character here, the girl in the elevator, is uh, Callie Hutira, and she appears in the first East End Irregulars book now. So that was a and she plays into the second book, actually. She uh, sort of becomes an ongoing mystery for a while there, but this is what started it. Now, her powers don't exactly work this way anymore. This was from the uh, original concept. We tweaked it to bring it into the Ascension Epoch, but uh, she's really fun to play around with now, and it's neat that I got to take something from a project that was scrapped and put it back in our new project. And these are additional images that I did for the uh, short story collection we released then, which is only available in print at conventions at this time. But if that ever changes, I'll uh, let you folks know. But a couple new images for the story and uh, tweaking of how her powers worked, and there we go. Uh, anyway. Callie appears in the East End Irregulars books. I forgot to mention in the main portion of the video that if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I'm always looking for new ideas for video topics, and I like to know what you guys enjoy, so I know to keep doing that. You all have an awesome day. Presto. Over and out. Farewell and adieu to you, ladies of Spain.